Yeah, maybe. All right, Blaine. <laughs> All right, so, so welcome. To I hate my party. being the bad guy for what it's worth. Oh, oh yeah, don't worry about it. I, I'm in. I'm in charge of this podcast now. From here to the end, I guess. <laughs> so, I said most of the, what I wanted to say. To be honest, the unofficial fifth member has taken over. Oh yeah, it's a coup. So, mm. I How have is been Ichiban? playing. Ichiban is a snack. I <laughs> hell yeah, and incredibly relatable. So listen. So I've been playing a few games lately. I was like playing the the. I told some people my story about how I actually got a free download of Bayonetta, even though I bought a used copy of Bayonetta 2. That was fucking crazy. Um, I was pl- I've was i been playing that on and off. I've been playing Octopath Traveler. I really enjoy that. It's a, one of the best RPGs I've played. I love that game so freaking much. It's so good. Yeah. Um, I remake 6 in Octopath's engine and I'll die happy. Bro, um, remake 5 <laughs> first. Remake 5 first. It needs yes, no, 5 needs a remake. Five it's not as good, but it six. needs a remake. It deserves Oh, it. it's way better. We can have, we can have that discussion later because I love Five. It was my favorite for the longest time. Um, but I'm getting sidetracked. Yeah, but then, I ha- while I was playing all these games about a week or two ago, I was like, man, I really should pre-order Yakuza Seven because I mean, I, I need to. It's it's a new start to the series. I didn't know if I wanted to play it immediately because I just I have like three, four, five in the Yakuza collection. I don't have six, but I know I have to play that. But I was talking to my boyfriend, and I was like, should I just play it? And he was like, just fucking play it. It's like, they, they want you to do a whole new start to the series. So I yeah, For what it. it's worth, I'm in the same camp, and I'm too stubborn to, to jump into seven. I, I have to beat six. I, I can't I'm do it. I'm actually playing zero right now. I, I stream play. it every once in a while. I've been off the boat for a little bit, but... Uh... Uh, oh, nice. I'll get back to I'm also I'm playing with, Zero. Uh, some 14 stuff. Zero is great, and I'm glad <laughs> y'all are playing it because that's going to be a portion I get into way later when I when someone the question comes up of well where should I start? What is the definitive answer? I just Fucking, I just have to become the karaoke king. It, it's we, not an option. We need John to keep playing. <laughs> This has karaoke too. John is playing seven, so I'm happy. Exactly. Um, he stopped playing zero. He needs to at least finish zero. He does need to finish zero at some point. But anyway, so I got it on, you know, I got it like 9 p.m. on launch day. I put it in, I started playing it, and I was just, I already was excited for it. I was down for it's a JRPG because he loves Dragon Quest and everything like that. I can't fucking describe how. Instantly, I not only clicked with this game, but the fact that, like, this is not just, oh, it's a great Yakuza game and it happens. This is this is already my game of the year. I've decided. I haven't beaten it yet. <laughs> this is my game of the fucking year. I, I it was maybe going to be Resident Evil 3. Maybe, um, I forget what the fuck ever. I had something else as a contender. But no, this fucking takes the cake. It is not only a great Yakuza game, not only a great uh yakuza game it, it's it's also one of the best rpgs i have played in fucking years can you touch more on uh the rpg aspect because up until now yakuza has exclusively yeah, been like a beat em up I, and uh, that the, to I, another rpg like what would you compare it to um i've seen some people compare it to persona 5 i can't make that comparison mm-hmm. only because i haven't played it and i will say as far as visual flair i would agree somewhat with that thing because it's a whole like you know a uh Triangle X square it spells circle. out Sega. I saw that. It's really cool. Do, do but, they see you coming? I don't know. I don't but um, <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Here we go. <laughs> but actually, what I would compare it to is it makes me think more of, and because of the fact that it wants to be, you know, an homage to Dragon Quest in that sense, because main character. I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Like. It actually reminds me of the older, older of old school RPGs, like Super Mario RPG specifically, mm. really comes to mind. All because right. when you play in the battles, it's like I said, triangle is your skills, X is your attack, circle <laughs> is your guard, square is your items and other uh, uh, miscellaneous things. And it totally reminds me of the Super Nintendo uh, Super Mario okay. RPG controls. Um, I think the I'm RPG it. aspect is probably, my, is probably the biggest appeal to me because I kind of tolerate yakuza gameplay i'm in it for like the quirkiness and the story mm-hmm. so to actually have yakuza game where the mm-hmm. gameplay is like one of the biggest appeals i'm like that that sounds like the perfect video game in the world yeah. i mean i i that's one of my favorite things about this is the fact that because it's a new style of gameplay because it's a new main character because it's also just it I'm not going to pretend like I'm the, the biggest expert in Yakuza. I, play, I played one a bit when it came out originally. 
I've beaten Zero, Kiwami. I've beaten the original uh, release of Three when they did that you whole Brave Soul. Yes, I I actually and Three was my favorite for a while. Before, well, I, played I only the... played. What's up? The remaster is okay, but jumping from Kiwami Two to Three is rough. I mean, for me, the jump because I started playing Kiwami Two, jumping from Kiwami One to Kiwami Two felt a little bit rough. Just in like, oh, these menus and UI looks like not oh yeah the same. But um, but Seven is just it is so polished. It looks so good. It is, and I haven't even gotten into the meat of this discussion. I'm just all hype right now. I'm gonna fucking take my glasses off. They're not staying on my face. Oh shit! So, so Glass, anime come, anime come villain arc. I, I, so I need to mm. I need to bring it. So like, I, I, I'm going to explain this as if I'm going to imagine none of you have played a Yakuza game, and I'm pitching this to you based on that. So the game does a thing which okay, this is going to sound stupid since of what I literally just said, but the game starts the way um, Yakuza One did, where it kind of <laughs> takes its time to establish the main character to you. You start with Ichi, Ichiban Kasuga in two, the year the turn of the cent the turn of the century after the turn of the millennium. It's December, New Year's Eve of 2000, and you just get to you get, you get introduced to him and how he's like you know he's a man of wanting to do the right thing and protect those he cares about, but also is in the Yakuza, so he's expected to do things like debt collection and 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 take and shit like that. But he's faced with problems like oh the deck he has to collect is someone he knew from middle school that he knows is. And, and I will say, uh, just a heads up, I'm not, the, the only spoilers that we can talk about is I'm going to be talking game mechanics and I'm going to be talking the early, early game and just some general, some story things that I think need to be discussed. It's not going to be like, oh, character deaths or anything like that. Um, From uh, what I've seen, um, Ichiban's pretty much diametrically opposed to Kiri on that he's not cool and collected. Like he's a little bit of a loser and like even his color scheme is completely the opposite of Kiryu's uh, white and then um, his white vest and then or his, no, his white jacket and then his red vest. And he's just the inverse of that, right? And it's it's funny because you would think that on an, on an, the initially, and it is intended that they are very different uh, outwardly projecting characters. Their, their backstories and their core, like who, what makes them who they are characters are actually very similar. They're both incredibly grounded in there. That cat is so cute. Both those cats are so cute. <laughs> oh my God, look at them. They're both <laughs> incredibly grounded in a, a, a strong moral and ethical um, sense of duty and right and wrong. They will not. They are not willing to sacrifice innocent people or or do the wrong thing if it's not. They, they would rather do the right thing. The main difference between them, if I had to really just get into it, aside from their outfits, is that while Kiryu is the is the strong, stoic, silent type, and will actively kind of, you know, it will really only let loose when he has to. Ichiban is just that boy is dumb as a bag of hammers. He does not stop talking. He will not stop talking. I adore him. Um, he think he st- acts before he speaks constantly, but he also is way more clever than people would assume. So, like, you'll get in situations Just like where, me, like, relate. exactly. <laughs> That's why I relate to him. And, and he, he he gets in these situations where, like, you know, the pe- person they have to collect the debt from, he realizes is someone he knew from middle school. So he beats the he does beat him down because he has to collect his wallet. And then he goes, opens the wallet, and dumps it out, and his cohorts like. What are you doing? He's like, hey, the boss said he wanted his wallet. That's what I'm giving him, his wallet. And then he talks to his friend about, like, you know, this guy's not working on New Year's Eve because he wants to. He's working because he has to. He's planning on paying back the money. His mother's in the hospital, and you learn all these other things. And you get a feel for, like, Ichiban is that one of that those soft good boys on the inside, even if he's a loudmouth dumbass most of the time. Um you 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 learn that he was you know he was abandoned when he was a baby uh his mother was a sex worker in a soap land which if you're not aware of what a soap land is viewers at home the basic idea is it's it is a legal uh it is a legal bathhouse where sex acts are performed pretty much imagine anything but actual intercourse is is allowed more or less and blaine what what is sex yeah, what's we'll that? See, when, wow. when, when two people really love what, each other, what is they a make faku? a mistake. Um, <laughs> they make I'm a ignoring mistake. that second one. 
But yeah, so wow. well, so he and 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 he he was he was abandoned in this bathhouse in this in this in this soap land and was raised by the owner as his father and by the sex workers there as his, as his works. The the community actually raised him as well. You know, they stood by him. And what I think is so interesting about this is that at first you get into this and you're thinking this is just your typical for people who have played Yakuza. It's your typical wacky like oh we're gonna meld serious with wacky stuff and it's gonna be all laughs and stuff. But then you go from Ichiban's backstory of, oh, he grew up uh, in a soap land and was around sex workers pretty much his whole young and, and adolescent life, going into when you're when you're left for dead by the Yakuza that you thought were going to have your back after being in jail for like 18 years. This is all early game. Um, you end up actually, the, one of the first things you do when you're trying to find work and you're butting up with the homeless, the homeless man that has saved your life more or less, you actually get a job protecting a, uh, a clean, you get a job, you get a job cleaning a restaurant that in reality is a brothel. Where they I know I, do I consistently forget this, but uh, this is the first Yakuza game, I believe, to have uh, English voice acting. Have you been playing oh, uh, sub or dub? Uh, oh, second. Yes. I was actually really second. curious about that. English voice acting. With, oh, you, you know what? You're right. Into it. Uh, the Mark Hamill. Mark, Mark Hamill voice module. Yeah, I, I think Judgment Marcus has an English dub too, right? And that's you know what? I like think you're right. In the, in the, um, that's considered yeah. like a... You're just wrong, Jose. What Damn. Was that? Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Mesa, I, 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 I had the target hookup. You're supposed to be in my corner. <laughs> you have a PS5 yeah, because of me. Fine. You can't buy friendship, Jose. Exactly. That was actually a question I had for you. Have you played it with the Eng English? Yeah, I have not. Curious. I have okay. not. Um, I heard a I lot know... of really positive things about it. Darren think... from SDGC was playing on it. From what I heard, it was it was really well made. Plus, um, I know that Matthew Mercer plays a very. Yeah. I don't want to say the. I I don't want to say the character because I guess it's a spoiler. But Matthew Mercer plays a returning character, and I want to yeah. know how he did. I as think a I don't think it's a spoiler, but I'm not going to say it. I think for me, so much yeah. of the charm of the Yakuza series is how specifically Japanese centric yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. So to play well, it in English kind of dilutes that. Yeah, that's how I feel. Um, I mean, I'm not going to throw shade on anybody who does want to play with the English dub. It's a phenomenal English dub from what I've seen. My biggest issue is, um, I mean, I, I have issues with the fact that George Takei plays a main character. I know he the the allegations against him seem murky, but I'm gonna be real. I just out of the things I when I did research on that, he just seems like a gross old man, whether he did what he was accused of or not. So I just don't care. For okay. Him. But um, but like, pull when, a judgment and fucking recast them in the game. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. Or or Yakuza um, Four. This is oh true. my god, yeah. The new remastered, uh, not Shinada, what's his name? It's the dude who's a young cop or whatever, right? Yeah. It's, that's so stupid. Well, he I was. forget his name. That is a whole other, that is a whole other show, too. Ta Tony Mora was his name. About the weird double standard of that with Japanese, um, blacklisting of actors. But, um, I, I know you want to talk about certain things, it's just, the, the reason I'm still focusing on the one thing is because it's all going to come together. So, like, you do the mission where you're cleaning out a brothel, and Ew. while playing, you're playing, <laughs> no. your, your, your characters are doing it. It's a cutscene, and and all of a sudden, these these group called Bleach Japan are are walking down the street, and they're marching against. You know, they want to get rid of all the sex work and all the everything else, whether it's all the gray areas. They want to bleach it white. And the guy gets into an argument with the woman who hired you about why sex work is wrong and these prostitutes are being are doing all these terrible things. And she says, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. These women are working their asses off because they have they want to support themselves. They some of them have children. They're trying to survive. Like you don't you don't get it, Mr. Sis Man with a megaphone. And then <laughs> he just goes like, Oh, did you hear that? They they're raising children. Who what kind of kid would be want to be the child of a prostitute? That would be so terrible. And after while this argument is going on, Ichiban is on the second floor, is holding and says, he screams at the top of his lungs, I never minded it. While he's holding a garbage can full of cum tissues, or whatever applied to cum <laughs> tissues, and he goes like this, and the guy down there is like, "Is is, is that what I think it is?" And he leans back to just dump it, and they all scatter like cockroaches. And the reason that I talk about this this big event is because 
that was the moment I realized that, holy shit, Yakuza 7 just said sex workers rights, but also the fact that it was actually tying Ichiban's history into something to subvert a very damaging trope, which is the whole, the poor sex worker or the poor child and sex worker and all that weird baggage. It's the same thing. It's the same argument that's like, oh, gay people won't raise you know, uh, straight children or whatever. They'll, exactly. they'll indoctrinate them to be yeah. gay. I'm like, uh, yeah. I was raised Not by straight, pa- I was raped by a straight, uh, bleh. I was raised by straight parents and I turned out gay as fuck. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, th- I think, uh, Derek from SGGC was, was pointing out that, um, a lot of the characters that wind up in your party, they, they're from these kinds of backgrounds or, you know, that mm-hmm. people f- from uh, lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, and I think that's one, absolutely commendable. It's given a voice to those, but at the same time, I kind of look back at something like I, and the entire series kind of does it, but Yakuza two in particular has a lot of xenophobia going on. That, yeah. Two is really bad Yakuza with two. it. It's so, yeah, it's, it's all about like the Chinese foreigners invading and uh, polluting our country. It, it's, it's a bit bad. Oh, that does sound bad. I will say this one is more there's three crime families that rule the area they're in, Yokohama, which is there's a Korean crime family, there's which is less organized, there's the Chinese mafia, and then there's a, a, a local Yakuza family. So it doesn't seem more like, oh, all these motherfuckers are invading. It's more like these three families have a stranglehold on this area, and nobody wants to do anything because something could set off a powder keg. Um, is this the same game that has like a chicken as a mayor, by the way? Like Yakuza Zero has a chicken that you can put into pro- property management, if that's what you're thinking. Wait, okay, you can put what? what? Yeah. I knew about the chicken. I didn't know you could put it, the chicken in that position. The chicken is an advisor to get you more money in the Hell property yeah. management <laughs> mini game that Kitty has. Hell yeah! yeah. To double check because I've never heard of Yakuza like discussing any any of this or like doing any of this. I oh, just, the games are oh, full of this. Here's a oh, chicken. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yakuza Hello, 7 wacky. is wacky. It is very wacky. It's just that it's not the things that you would expect mm-hmm. to be just wackiness are actually like later after this, the next job you work is literally for a soap land and you're helping a man, you're helping a mm-hmm. person who seems like an asshole at first and they all call him on it. But then you realize that while he was being an asshole, he actually genuinely cares for the people that work in his place of sex work and you deal with bleach Japan again. It's a reoccurring theme and I think that that's a really important thing to bring. But yeah. I know, because I know Jose is probably going to interrupt me if I don't get to this. I know y'all want to hear about this gameplay and how mm-hmm. why this is such a great RPG. So, how many people here? I mean, Nexus is going to say yes. How many people here have played Final Fantasy V Hell or Ten yeah. Two? Hell yeah! I played Ten Two for like a hot minute. <laughs> okay, I played the fifth. How, so uh, there you go. So get it? If the you, fifth. If you play, ah, I get it. Nice. I get it. If you've ever played a game where you switch classes, mm. this game has a literal job system. They take yeah, I heard the idea. About that. It it is fantastic. So, you, so bad. You you get you get you get jobs based on. I mean, the first one I got was um, the main character Ichiban gets the hero job after. Well, he starts off with Yakuza, which morphs into. It's Yakuza, which morphs into Our Power Loyalist, which morphs into Deadbeat when he's homeless, and then which morphs into Freelancer when he's trying to get other things. Which, the first thing I, the second, when I went back to it and looked at that again and saw it said Freelancer, I was like, wait, that's kind of a reference to the to the uh, original localization of Final Fantasy V, because you were literally called a Freelancer if you didn't select a job. And um, his first job is Hero, but... The game has you go to the job center, hello work, an unemployment office. And I learned recently that even though I haven't like unlocked that um, mode, I guess, or or ability, you actually, why are you smiling? Uh, you sorry, we're, <laughs> my, you're ta- we're listening to what you're saying, but there's there's a chat conversation between me and Jose in the Twitch chat right now. <laughs> okay, Just... I'm gonna look at that in a, in a, a little bit. I can't I'll, 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 right su- I'll summarize it for the audio and YouTube <laughs> listeners. Uh, Corey was very upset with my previous pun. He said, "Why, Jose? Why?" I told him uh, he should become a pun doctor. Maybe you, you would gain some patience. And I just lost my shit. You couldn't <laughs> stop smiling, then I couldn't stop smiling. I, I'm smiling under here, you can't say. Um, but yeah, no, so like, I, I'm actually really excited. I've, I've seen that, like, when you... 
the, the way you develop these other jobs I, when I did some more research is the fact that the game also has a personality system. What the personality system is, is Ichiban will be faced with uh, every Yakuza game has had like, you know, you'll have, oh, do you want to answer like an asshole? Do you want to give a serious, sincere answer? Do you want to give a wacky answer? And now it's not just do you want which dialogue tree? It also goes into leveling up your personalities. You'll have the stats like kindness, intelligence, um, passion. And what these do is they give you buffs to defend against like certain status ailments. They will, um, they will affect... I believe they also affect your relationship with your um, uh, relationships with your party members, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And they also allow you to decide whether or not you can get certain jobs down the line for Ichi. Like one is, I, from what one article I saw was that like you can get a job called host or something like that. And you have to have like a style rating of level of like five or more or something like that to get it. And this is all just based on either responding to ways, certain things, certain ways in conversations, or also you can go to a voc there is a vocational school in the game, which costs bit like t at least I think minimum of like fifty thousand yen per class. Some of them are thirty thousand, but you take a test and then you will get massive upgrades to your um, personality level based on that. And it all ties back into the way the fucking job system. It's like it, it blows my mind that I'm playing a Yakuza game that has. It's like this game was made for me because I love job systems. It's my favorite mechanic of JRPGs since Final Fantasy V. Uh, I know it started earlier than that, but I don't like to talk about three because that game sucks. Um, <laughs> Oof. It's, it sucks. Uh, I'm sorry. It sucks. It looks uh, really nice. Aged very poor. So poorly. I mean, it looks really nice. The story is fine. But the but the fucking gameplay in that game is just dog shit. Even on the DS remake, yeah. um, um, the fa and 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 like, I I don't know. I just I mean, this game plays so it's so fun to play. It's so I'm sorry if I'm getting rambly here. It, it's so fun to play. It's so well polished. Um, the mini games are back. You have like one which is you go to a movie theater and you have to. Because this guy is like, oh, everybody comes in my theater and falls asleep, and I just want to show people classic cinema. And the I it becomes a not a rhythm mini game, but like a they pop up and you have to push the corresponding button mini game of stopping yourself from falling asleep, which is shown by these men in suits with sh well pe people with suits in, in in suits with giant sheep heads, not anthro sheep heads, <laughs> like just straight up sheep heads doing hand motions and creating big z's to shoot at you and knock you out and like and and you can also use that to like i guess gain bond points with your party and that's that's the thing i forgot to talk about is that on top of everything else you have a party system with your party members like one is the is nanba a homeless man who's an ex a, an ex nurse um the other one right now I have is a dachi who was fired from the who was originally like sent to a lower position within the police force to stamping license li licenses because his boss didn't like him and over the course of the events of the story he actually loses that job as well so you're all unemployed together and you are able to develop relationships with your party by by you know you can go to this bar called the survive karaoke bar and you sing karaoke you can sing yourself and they'll cheer you on you can actually do the thing like you would be able to do in previous games multiplayer, which is like you'd sing back up or cheer them on from the audience. But with, what this allows you to do is you can actually build more of your relationship points with them by doing that. And when you unlock these things called drink links, that's when you hit, uh, that's when you've gotten your bond as far as it can go in the regular game and you have to go back to survive to have a conversation with them. And they talk about um, like, you know, something from their past that they are not happy about or other things. And you grow stronger and it allows you to go to the next level of friendship with them. How and do, um, how do, how do summons work? A, how does summoning work? So that's, that's a good question. Um, summoning is unlocked via a sub story that is, I believe unmissable because it's, it's directly in your path on the main story anyway. Um, so you, you're handed a flyer that's like, oh, call Poundmates. And it, that is the name of it. It's called Poundmates. It's fantastic. I and think I saw John talking about that. Yes, you he did. He gave it a John bit of a different context. 
Uh, maybe, maybe not. So it's it's the Adachi, the ex detective, thinks it's a you know call and have us you know get a get a the first it says the first call is free and he thinks it's for sex. So he calls and everything like that. And that's like a thing. Keep reoccurring themes of sex work in this game. I actually really love it. It's it's really good. Um, all of a sudden, Gary Buster Holmes shows up from uh, I believe it was Yakuza One. It was his first appearance, right? Really, I don't really recall tall. Who, I don't... I don't recall who that is. Give me a refreshing. Really tall black man that uh, speaks in broken Japanese. Well, not broken Japanese, but like very clearly, I am not a person from Japan, but I have learned fluent Japanese. And he enunciates mm-hmm. very specifically. Uh, that wouldn't he was in the happen. To, one. That wouldn't happen to be the same because you can tell how bad. It, I mean, it's Japan, but diversity, whatever. Um, that wouldn't happen to be the same character from Yakuza Three onwards, the one that gives you revelations, right? No, 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 no. Different character, as far okay. as I know. This isn't. This is like a. This is a guy you fight in one of the in the tournament. I think that you have to take place in or whatever in one. It, it, it's been a few years since I played Kiwan. Um, but anyway, like he he shows up and he's like, oh yeah, you hired me. And the whole idea is that it's it's a service where you call someone to help you and you pay them money and they beat the living shit out of whoever is harassing you. So that's the summon system. Hmm. Is you pay money to summon someone to beat the asses of the people. Isn't you're there one where you can summon like a horde of crawdads or something? I what? saw that in one of the trailers. I haven't unlocked that yet. I have unlocked so far, uh, but Gary Buster Holmes, who just comes down with big metal balls on his hands. If you've ever seen um, Great Teacher Onizuka, there's a bit where he gets bowling balls super glued to his hands. Oh, hell yeah! They call what it the fuck. Yeah, yeah. And they think he and he kind of starts pretending he's Dodaimon. This is kind of like that, except he just has big spiked balls on his fists in the summon thing. And he, Jeez. he you know, turns around. Another one is a sumo wrestler that you meet in a sub story because doing sub stories you unlock other ones, and doing the main story you unlock other pound mates. But he's a big hairy sumo wrestler that does a sumo pound on the ground and it shatters the earth. Um, I know for a fact. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say it because Sarah said it was a spoiler. Um, there's a there's I'm not gonna get it. Um. There's uh, one I unlocked that if anyone's familiar with the, I don't know if it's a mockery of ABDL, which stands for adult baby diaper lover, or if it's just like, oh, look at you mean the best, you mean the best sub story in Kiwami 2 has made its return? Always, it is made of return in a big way. Um, (laughs) And through doing that sub story, you get the patriarch of that Yakuza family. Who, when what? you summon him, I believe he just dro- drops on the ground and lets out a wail so loud that it stuns all the enemies. And... Alright, I think just because we're getting close to the end, you have mm-hmm. a, a summary of your of your thoughts, if you had to bullet point it. If I had to bullet point it, um... We accept dashes. A... <laughs> and squares. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I've... I've been a fan of the Yakuza series for a while. Um, I, I, I mean, not when it first came out, but like more when Zero was really going forward and Kiwami, and I just fell right back into it after I loved Three. And a lot of people have, you know, always asked the question like, well, "What's the best place to start?" Should I start at Z? And for the longest time, it was just start at Zero. It's the best one. It, it starts you right at the beginning of the story, and you know they're re-releasing everything, so you can just keep going right down the line. Now that becomes more a question of, do you want to start Kazuma Kiryu's story and do you want to see the original Yakuza story? Or do you just want to jump in and have a fun time? And is, honestly, it necessary, is it necessary whatsoever to play previous Yakuza games to appreciate this? I don't think so. And this is, I mean, someone has, I told you, I almost was like not ready to play Yakuza 7 because I was like, I got to beat the other ones. I am so glad I did not force myself to do that because this game stands so much on its own. Look at I, th- I think if anything, I might Look at just this wait. Look fucking steelbook. Look at this boy. Nice. <laughs> Look at this stupid, beautiful boy. I think he if anything. no idea how dumb he is. I think if I'm anything, sorry, I might just wait the for the Atta. Sea of craw- crawdads. I would just lay down <laughs> in that sea. I, I, uh, I think I might just wait for the <laughs> PS5 patch to go through before I jump in. I might as well experience oh, it. With, yeah, there's the, no uh, reason. Upgrades, whatever. There's no reason you don't you, you don't have to wait. Um, and I will say, like especially like you had mentioned, um, having the issue with like the fact that it was a brawler just was something that you kind of made you bounce off of it in some ways. 
I, I think this is such a... They clearly... I'm going to mirror something that Derek from SDGC said. Like, they clearly want this game to be a new beginning. They're calling it Like a Dragon in America. They're not calling it Yakuza 7. Um, they're stressing the English dub. They're, you know, this is a separate character. Like, I have not seen mention... I'm at least seven to nine hours into this game already. I have not seen mention of Kiryu. I have not seen mention of characters like him or Majima or the older mm -hmm. characters. Maybe uh, there's references to the Tojo clan, obviously. But, like, I mean, this is another thing. The Tojo clan's not really a thing in this game. Like, you find out pretty early on that the Tojo clan is not is not what it was. And even more so than, like, I haven't played 6, so I don't know if there's anything going For on. For what is that. worse, I don't think that's a spoiler whatsoever because it is such a tidal weight of up and down in every single fucking game. Yeah. Let, let, let's just put it this way. The Tojo clan does not exist. The only alliance exists and in Kamurocho and that. So, like, this is honestly a great place if you've never played series... If you are not certain if you're really into brawlers, it is an incredibly engaging RPG. If you like JRPGs, I can't stress it enough. Get this. Like, anybody who follows me knows I can't fucking stand Persona in general. I mean, I want to play <laughs> 1 and 2 and 3, but, like, 4 and 5 I have so many fucking problems with that I don't need to get into. This is, like, this is something I would say if you like... If you like a modern JRPG, especially from what I've seen of things of like Persona 4, Persona 5, but you don't want to have to kind of weigh the options of do I deal with like all of this this other nastiness, or do I just deal with maybe the occasional not great, well thought out thing, but overall still like kind of a more solid product, I would push you towards this. Because this is the best modern RPG I've played in at least. I honestly can't remember the last time I had this much fun with a modern JRPG. I really can't. Well, I think that's probably the the best thing you can say about it. Is that it's not just like, oh, I don't know, we're kind of like putting our toes in the water with the RPG. No. They actually went and made a solid RPG. This is a when they say like, oh, they want the main they they, they when they designed it like the main character loved Dragon Quest as a kid, so he views his world as a J as an RPG, and and that's like what they built the game design off of. That wasn't just a contrivance of well, we're just going to do some wacky like we'll dip in the toes and like you said, they have fully committed. This is a well-constructed RPG. I don't want them to go back to Brawlers after this. I want them to make Yakuza 8 if they make it and make it a JRPG or do other experimental things within the RPG genre. I don't want them to go back to what they did and just kind of make this like a one-off thing. 